reaction steam turbine which is also known as Parsons reaction turbine for this turbine for Parsons turbine degree of reaction R is equal to 0.5 which means steam enthalpy decreases equally between fixed blades and moving blades that is delta H fixed blades is equal to delta H moving blades hence the fixed blades and moving blades of hence the fixed blades and moving blades of Parsons reaction turbine are of identical shaped they do have the same shape that is symmetrical shaped I'm sorry that is aerofoil shaped the moving blades of the Parsons reaction turbine are of aerofoil shaped whereas the moving blades of the pure impulse turbine is symmetrical shaped so if you draw the moving blades and fixed blades of the Parsons reaction turbine both are of aerofoil shaped this is fixed blade this is moving blade steam expands steam expands in both these uh, in both these blades this is called one stage of turbine stage of 50 percent degree of reaction turbine that is Parsons turbine both are of aerofoil shaped and they do have the same shape if you look at the velocity triangles of Parsons turbine V1 is absolute velocity of steam at inlet VR1 is the relative velocity of steam at inlet VR2 is the relative velocity of steam at exit V2 is the absolute velocity of steam at exit this is alpha theta this is phi this is beta we can say that for 50% degree of reaction turbine where the steam 
expands in both fixed blades and moving blades relative velocity of steam at exit is more than relative velocity of steam at inlet because of which there is a reaction force the steam enters with the less relative velocity into the moving blades when the steam pressure drops across the moving blades and when this enthalpy of the steam drops across the moving blades relative velocity at exit will be more than the relative velocity of at inlet hence there is a reaction force acting on the moving blades of the turbine that is the reason why this is called impulse reaction turbine the driving force exerted by the steam on the moving blades is because of two reasons number one the impulsive action that is the change in velocity in magnitude and number two the reaction force that is this component of the reaction force is arising out of the increase in relative velocity of steam from inlet to the exit because the steam pressure drops in the moving blades drawing the velocity triangles again for the sake of resolution of absolute velocity vectors drawing the velocity triangles on the common base is a usually followed practice particularly when we deal with the reaction turbine the velocity triangles of the parsons reaction turbine are of symmetrical shaped about the vertical axis that is v1 is equal to the vr2 and vr1 is equal to the v2 alpha is nozzle angle theta is moving blade angle at inlet same notation is followed uh, for the uh, uh, parsons reaction turbine also as that the notation followed in the pure impulse turbine phi is the moving blade exit angle and there is a new angle we are defining here beta that is the absolute velocity uh, uh, angle at exit with reference to the blade velocity blade velocity u we have drawn the velocity triangles on the common basis u where u is tangential blade velocity given by pi d and by 60 meters per second n is rpm Uh, of the uh, rotor and d is the mean diameter of the rotor now resolving the absolute velocity at inlet v1 parallel to the blade velocity and uh, perpendicular to the blade velocity as vw1 is viral component of absolute velocity v1 parallel to u vf1 is equal to flow component of absolute velocity v1 perpendicular to u yet inlet similarly vw2 then i draw the vw2 here
VWT is viral component of absolute velocity at outlet parallel to U but in this case it is of course opposite to the direction of the U. U is rightwards whereas VWT is leftwards. Then VF2 is the flow component of absolute velocity V2 perpendicular to U. So, denoting Vf2 in the figure at outlet. Now, uh, as we have seen from the figure, the entire diagram, velocity diagrams are symmetrical about the vertical axis bisecting U. Therefore, Vf1 is Vf2. And uh, looking at the diagram power or work done per second by steam on moving blades, we use the Euler's turbine equation that is mass flow rate of the steam into VW1 plus VW2 into U so many Newton meter per second this is the uh, from this is uh, from Euler's turbine equation or generalized uh, turbo machine equation applicable for all steady flow turbo machines the Euler turbine equation that is uh, rate of energy transfer between the fluid and the rotor that is power developed by the fluid while it does work on the rotor is given as mass flow rate of the fluid into change in wheel component of the absolute velocity of the fluid from inlet to exit that is VW1 plus VW2 and multiplied by blade tangential speed U. So this product M dot into VW1 plus VW2 into U shall give the rate of energy transfer between the fluid and the rotor generalized equation for a turbo machine. For Parsons turbine or 50% degree of reaction turbine from the velocity triangles V1 is equal to Vr2 Vr1 is equal to V2 alpha is equal to fly that is nozzle angle is equal to moving blade exit angle and beta is equal to theta that is moving blade inlet angle theta is equal to absolute velocity angle 
at exit of the moving blade. That is the reason why from this configuration we can say that both the fixed blades and moving blades of a 50% degree of re reaction steam turbines they are just identical in shape. They look alike. Both the fixed blades and moving blades of Parsons reaction turbine look alike. The diagram efficiency of Parsons turbine can be given as work done per second by steam on moving blade divided by KE input per second plus delta H of steam in moving blades because a part of the work done by the steam on the moving blades is obtained due to the reaction force exerted by the steam on the moving blades. How come this reaction force is exerted? Because there is increase in relative velocity of steam from inlet to the exit of the moving blade. How come the relative velocity is increasing from inlet to the exit? Because of enthalpy drop of steam in the moving blades. So, in the denominator of the definition of diagram efficiency, the total, uh, the total input to the stage is taken as KE input, kinetic energy of steam at inlet of the moving blade plus enthalpy drop of steam in the moving blades of the turbine. The diagram efficiency of Parsons steam turbine is maximum when blade speed ratio rho is equal to u by v1 is equal to cos alpha where alpha is nozzle angle that is angle between v1 and angle between v1 and u it is uh, important to note that the diagram efficiency of pure impulse steam turbine that is d level steam turbine shall be maximum when blade speed ratio rho is equal to cos alpha by 2 whereas the diagram efficiency of Parsons steam turbine shall be maximum when rho is equal to cos alpha. The respect to maximum blade efficiency of Parsons turbine is equal to 2 cos square alpha by 1 plus cos square alpha. This is the maximum uh, diagram efficiency or blade efficiency of Parsons reaction turbine that is 50% degree of reaction steam turbine. Now I shall solve a problem on steam turbines given in gate 1996 this is a problem on steam turbines given like this the velocity of steam exiting the nozzles of the impulse stage of a turbine is 400 meters per second.
the blades operate close to the maximum blading efficiency the nozzle angle is 20 degrees considering equiangular blades and neglecting blade friction calculate for a steam flow of 0.6 kg per second the diagram power and the diagram efficiency the solution to this problem could be given like this it is a pure impulse turbine given the data as absolute velocity of the steam at the inlet of the at the inlet of the moving blade is given as v1 400 meters per second the blade velocity is u since it is given that blades operate close to maximum blade efficiency u by v1 is cos alpha by 2 where alpha is nozzle angle which is given as 20 degrees it is also mentioned that equiangular blades theta is equal to phi neglecting blade friction means blade velocity coefficient k is equal to vr2 by vr1 is equal to 1 vr1 is equal to vr2 now also given that mass flow rate of the steam is 0.6 kg per second so we constructing velocity triangles v1 is given as 400 u could be easily calculated as cos 20 by 2 into v1 that is approximately 0.47 into 400 meters per second this is alpha this is theta vr1 resolving the v1 perpendicular and parallel to the blade velocity u vw1 can be obtained as v1 cos alpha that is 400 cos 20 so many meters per second 
I need VR1 also for which I can write sin alpha as VF1 divided by V1 VF1 is equal to V1 sin alpha that is 400 sin 20 that is Vf1 obtained in meters per second please fill in the blanks now now sin theta is equal to Vf1 by Vr1 whereas Vf1 is V1 sin alpha by Vr1 that is 400 sin 20 by Vr1 whereas theta could be obtained from tan theta is equal to Vf1 divided by Vw1 minus u is equal to V1 sin alpha divided by V1 cos alpha minus u from which blade angle at inlet can be obtained. After obtaining that one blade angle we can write relative velocity at inlet is equal to 400 sin 20 by sin theta so we got the relative velocity at inlet also which is equal to relative velocity at exit since friction factor k is 1 we got relative velocity at inlet moving blade angle at inlet now coming to the outlet velocity triangle this is VR2 this is U this is V2 this is VW2 this is VF2 theta is equal to phi since blades are equiangular very clearly given therefore VW2 can be obtained as VR2 cos phi minus u so many meters per second we know both VW1 and VW2 immediately we can calculate diagram power is equal to work done per second is equal to mass flow rate of the steam into VW1 plus VW2 into U so many Newton meter per second or Joule per second or Watts now coming to the diagram efficiency or blade efficiency is defined as diagram power divided by ke input per second this being the pure impulse denominator is ke input per second which is written as m dot into vw1 plus vw2 into u divided by half into m dot into v1 square this is 2u into vw1 plus vw2 divided by v1 square 
everything else we know everything else we know u is known vw1 is already calculated vw2 calculated v1 is given in the problem we will obtain the diagram efficiency or blade efficiency